On this trip, I'm hitting the Bahamas with one of my favorite people in the world, Kimmy Werner. I was guarding the back door and your fish was coming out the back door. What do you want me to do, just like? Oh, and she grouper hogged me? She's been training me up in the mysterious ways of the spear fisherman, or in her case, spear fisher woman. And this is the point in that journey where you learn about pole spears, which can be defined as a device that makes you miss fish that you otherwise would have gotten really easily with a regular spear gun. Have your wrist up, aim down your thumb, and try to be consistent every time. We're joined by Cameron Kurt Connell, who makes everything look annoyingly easy, and his first mate, T, who seems to know what the fish are gonna do before they do it. Once you show you got him on, he's past the halfway point, give him the heat. So get your fillet knives sharpened, kids. Things are gonna get slimy. I've followed trails of all kinds pursuing wild game through our country's wildest places. These are my stories. There he's out. These are my people. <laughs> I'm Steven Ranello, and this is Meat Eater. Fish on! Yep. Living under that frigate bird up there. I was mildly incredulous. I was like, really? Is that really what's happening? But yeah, man, the behavior of the bird suggested to these guys that that bird was following Mahi. And we just acted like we were trying to fish under the bird. And it was true. Nice work. Nice work, baby. Oh, nice work, Steve. Thank you. There are few things in this world as calming and pleasing to the eye as the aqua blue waters, coconut laden palm trees, and silky white sand of the tropics. This is Elbow Key on the eastern edge of the Bahamas, just a stone's throw from South Florida. I've come here with my dear friend and mentor, Kimmy Werner, about the coolest and nicest person you're gonna find on the water, or on the land for that matter, who's been assisting me with my spearfishing game for a few years now. To show us around, we've enlisted the aid of her friends, Cameron Kirk Connell and his Bahamian fishing partner, Errol Thurston Jr., or T, to his friends. Life's good, life's good. I first met Cameron a few years ago while working on our audio series, Meat Eaters Campfire Stories, when Cam told the story of saving a spear fisherman who'd blacked out and was sinking to the bottom of the ocean by shooting him through the fin and then hauling him back to the surface. He's that good. He and T have been fishing the Bahamas for their entire lives. This is the clear side, so all the fish are gonna be up current. What we're gonna do is get up in front of them, try to push them to the rocks. Those big groupers are going the rocks. So you're doing a grouper drive. Basically. The plan for this trip is to keep it loose and do whatever makes sense in the moment, pending the ever-fluctuating water temps, water clarity, tides, and ocean currents. We're mainly focusing on grouper, black grouper, Nassau grouper, yellowfin grouper, as well as mutton and kubera snappers and hogfish. But we are definitely open to any surprises that might show up. It's almost overwhelming how many fish species are here. That's mm -hmm. amazing. It's wild. I like that kind of this, man. It's my kind of fishing spot. <laughs> kind of broken bottom with the soft corals is good. And then it breaks off into like a ledge. It's gonna be sweet. How are you with the pole spear? I mean, I've shot fish with it, but I wouldn't say I'm like a good pole spear. I would say I'm good at anything with underwater. I think the easiest way to do it is like we're doing loading and then aim down your thumb. Nope. You know, have your, your wrist up, aim down your thumb, and try to be consistent every time. Like, have it here, like the back of the spear should be on the back of your arm. It's 
instead of like having it randomly out there. Yeah. Because that way it's and the you're same not you're time. not loading normally at the surface, are you? Depends what you're seeing. In order to limit catch numbers, the Bahamas has outlawed any fishing equipment with a trigger mechanism, meaning spear guns. Instead, we're only allowed to use pole spears. Similar to what many people know as three prongs, these spears are designed for a shorter range and have a detachable head connected to a cable wire. They make long shots in open water pretty tricky, but they happen to be perfect for targeting things like groupers that hide out in small, twisting caves and rock formations. From the time you see the fish, I want you to have the spear pointed at them. If you're looking at them straight like that, being able to load yeah. towards them, yeah. they don't see much. Yeah. But if you're here and you do this and then turn, they're like, yeah, whoa, yeah, yeah. now he's honed in on me. Too yeah. Much, much right. Like any novel equipment, pole spears come with a bit of a learning curve. It's one of those things you might say, a minute to learn, a lifetime to master. I miss a lot. But I take comfort in knowing that even a world-class talent like Kimmy is prone to mistakes occasionally. <laughs> I just was waiting for the Kuberas. I kind of thought the hog was like a consolation prize and then took it for granted. I was kind of still looking around as I took the shot and then just went right over the top of him. My eye is so not developed here. <laughs> Don't get me wrong though, we still get plenty of fish. I gotta work on my age. <laughs> that was kind of close to being another miss. I love these fish. Beautiful and delicious. That big black grouper I was chasing went in this rock. So there's two holes. He went in over here, Steve. See that spot? You're gonna dive with me on this one. Kimmy, you're gonna go on that one. And just be ready to shoot with the light looking in there, okay? The first time you look in there is definitely gonna be the best. Nice, good job. Look at this fish. He spit out a fish. Is this a black? Yeah. That was tiring. That was cool. Today we're gonna to be in a channel. Cause it's so rough offshore, we just get abused if we're out there. So we're waiting for this incoming tide to pull some good water in. Uh -huh. And we're just basically gonna set up in the mouth of the channel and just drift through it and see what's there. It's only 15 to 30 feet deep. And just as we're cruising, be looking down current. Cause you're not gonna be able to turn and swim back up river. Oh, you know, it's cranking. Yeah, it's gonna be moving. <laughs> oh, okay. So kind of anticipate them coming. And like, if the fish is coming here, just try to meet them. Unlike the Hawaiian Islands, which are the peaks of a mountain range, the Bahamas is more of a plateau or a huge shelf jutting out of Florida's eastern shore. Here you get broad channels of swift current as water flows out with the ebbing tide through gaps between the many islands. Park yourself at the top of that current and you can ride it like a river, picking off fish as you go. Get to the end, then motor back up to the start. Wash, rinse, repeat. Just the right amount of current, you can still fight it. You can still turn around. If you have to. Yeah. The buttons want to be out in the open all the time. As soon as you hit them, yeah. they want to go in a hole. 
when you go for those, just stay on them. That's what I did when I got the one I got. <laughs> I just held I was like, oh, you're just gonna do that? I'm just chase them down. <laughs> you're just gonna let me do that? <laughs> they want to swim into the current yeah. because the tide's ripping. So as you see him coming, just dive at a 45 and just go right. Oh, you mean he, okay. But once he's up, you're not gonna catch him. You're not gonna catch him. Yeah. They have suspiciously better uh, hydrodynamics. <laughs> One incident that deserves particular attention occurred on one of our later runs. Cam happened to catch a glimpse of a monster grouper ducking into a big rock formation with two distinct entrances. I made my move. When I took my shot, he skillfully avoided me and took right off into Kimmy's waiting arms as she guarded the back door. I'm gonna hang on to this grudge for a while and make sure Kimmy knows it. They told me to guard the back door. I was guarding the back door and your fish was coming out the back door. What do you want me to do, just like? Oh, she grouper hogged me? <laughs> <laughs> I would rather have that big ass mutton. That's the biggest one for sure. For a day that's it blowing 25 so knots. It's so beautiful. <laughs> that's pretty good. Damn. Damn. It's just exciting because you're just like, what, it's like going on a grocery aisle, except you don't know what you're going to get. It's all surprises, and then you got to just act on it, like, in an instant. Got it's it. so different from the, like, take your time, breathe up, <laughs> like, go, go, go. Fun stuff, Cam. <laughs> Do it again and again. When a guy like Cam, someone who has caught literally hundreds of species of fish from all around the world, tells you one of his favorite things to do is rod and reel fish for yellowtail snapper, well, it's probably a good idea to go rod and reel fishing for yellowtail snapper. Really rough offshore, so we're trying to like kind of be in between the islands, but it's breaking here, and we're like just inside of the breakers trying to anchor up, and there's a lot of surge, a lot of current. It's tight. Yeah, I think you got it on that one. Yeah. This would be good. So plan is mm -hmm. we're set up like in kind of this path. Yep. We got some hard bottom behind us. I'm going to put a chum bag out, which is like ground up ballyhoo, and just let that chum go back. And we're just going to hook a piece of shrimp or ballyhoo on and let it free line back just like the chum so it looks natural. When they hit it, it's going to go brrr, close the veil and just real tight. Let's do it. They want it to be drifting exactly how every other piece of bait that's coming back is. OK. So if it's fighting the current, right. they know something's wrong. Wait a minute. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> On the van stall. <laughs> there it is. Oh, yeah, there you go, Phil. Nice. Target species. Nice one. Good job, Kimmy. Thanks. Whenever we go rod and reel fishing, I always feel like, oh, I'd rather be diving, and then once I catch a fish, then I get really into it. Oh, Kimmy's in the hot spot. <laughs> my god, they're just such fun little fighters. Steve and I will never know. No. <laughs> it's just... We got a double. Look at that one. Oh, that's a beauty. Big one there. So that's getting a little closer to what we'd call flag. Flag? Yeah, like they're long enough to be a flag, like oh, to like fly. Actual... That's a good one, though. That looks like a good one. Chunky. Oh, no. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I mean, go, Cam, go. <laughs> oh, jeez. Damn, Cam. I think the barracudas are catching on to this, and one just came and took my yellowtail hook and all. Oh, oh. I can feel a barracuda hit him on the way back in there. They just cut it right in half. One swipe, boom. So quick. It's amazing how sharp their teeth are. 
Sorry, guys. Flag. <laughs> nice, man. That's, nice. That's a stud there. I flung it in so fast because I didn't want the paracuda to bite it. Now, if you're wondering why there's no footage of me catching fish, it's because I'm not, and it is starting to get to me. <laughs> oh, wow. Look at that. Wow. That thing got shredded. What kind of fish is that? Santel, he got chowed. We're gonna send him right back out. I'm not usually one to get jealous of other success, but this fishing drought is killing me. I'm used to getting shown up by these guys underwater, but this is ridiculous. It's time to make some personal adjustments to my rig. Oh yeah. I told you, I had to tie a new hook up. <laughs> good Lord. <laughs> Finally, as my good friend Kevin Murphy would say, I'm off the egg. Right there. Not the bad. And things really start to flow. Now you found oh, it. Oh, boy. Different. Houndfish. Oh. Oh, we call those aha, the blue bone, yeah? He just needed to. I just needed to take control Reset. of my own. I couldn't fish a rod that didn't rig. It just didn't feel like me. It didn't feel like an extension of myself. T gets to where he just can't handle it anymore and gets in on the action. Kills him seeing me fishing. He knows how much better he is at it. Here, I'll take him off for you. <laughs> That's a good one, man. That's a great one. There he is. I feel like I've let so many fish walk. For sure, because they're, they're sucking it off and spitting it out as soon as they feel it. No, dude, now that I'm seeing what you're talking about, I've let a lot of fish walk <laughs> today. Yeah. Kimmy, you on? Yeah. Back in the meat. And this is really good in deep water. You can get, so the whole back of the boat here is just yellow. They're just swarming the boat. Yeah. Explain to me what you guys are looking at when you're talking about tides as it relates to water clarity. Because there's such a large kind of inner body of water here between the outer islands and the mainland, yeah. this gets stirred up pretty easy because there's so much movement of water. And it gets green. All the algae and the sea grass and stuff, you get so much chlorophyll in the water. Look right now, you see it's green. Yeah. Oh, it's chlorophyll. So when the tide switches, all this dirty water gets flushed out to where there would normally be clear water outside of the reef. Oh, so that's what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Is this water has moved out? Yes. I understand now. So you want the incoming tide to bring fresh That's clean water. That's because I couldn't figure out why you're talking about giving the incoming tide time, bringing bring clean water. water from outside back in. I, I and everything's waiting for that dirty water to start flowing out to ambush stuff. Mm -hmm. So that clean surface. water will come in, and eventually it, as it sits over that tide cycle, it'll yep. get less pristine. Yep. Yeah. Got you. It's time to get back in the water, and I'm really hoping I can round this trip out with a grouper of my own. Whenever you're ready, let's go. There's a hog and a grouper in that hole. In the big hole? Mm -hmm. Oh. The hog is where you're pointing, the grouper is in the creek. You shoot the grouper we haven't even seen yet. What's that? That was a different grouper oh, all together. It? Yeah, good job. Perfect shot, too, Steve. Kimmy just shot the hog, too. Oh, she did? Yeah, he popped out somewhere else. Good. <laughs> nice shot, Steve. Thank you. When you shot that guy, this guy jetted out of the hole. Let me see that. I like this spot. Oh, dude, it's amazing, dude, man. Holy.
But every time you see something, you see something else. <sighs> That's a beautiful fish. You put us on a great spot, T. You got it, baby. Anything for you, Kimmy. <laughs> got it. I finally got that grouper checked off my list, and then things just go bananas. That spot was loaded. That's a oh my God, it was amazing. Did see him? Started a lot of holes there. We could get him out of it though. It look easy. <laughs> it's not always that easy. <sighs> nice work. Thanks a lot to shoot something. Nice work. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful fish. Yeah. It made it look easy. easy. <laughs> yellow wing or yellow fin grouper. Might be the prettiest fish in the trip. <laughs> Really fired up. Pretty. You're whipped, man. Man, my ass. Kip. <laughs> Zero mackerel. Kimmy just got a nice grouper. <laughs> There's so many fish right now. Steve, that shot you took is the hardest shot. From straight above, I miss that every time. Well, he was kind of distracted, though. <laughs> it's not an epic, but you got it. I would have missed. Whew. Man. You're on today, brother. How awesome is this? This is like the first 20 minutes of the day. Yeah. Dude, this is amazing. Dude, what a drift that was. Okay. <laughs> All these fish are from one drift. We haven't gotten out of the water yet. Man. Holy cow. Great mess of beautiful fish, so man. Cool. What are we gonna have for dinner? You're making carpaccio with the yellow jack. Yep. Okay, I'm gonna make mahi sandwiches and then we're just gonna do a yellowtail whole fried. Okay, so you, choppy chop. Overall, we caught about 16 different kinds of fish. One count had it at 17.5. Choosing to make just three of those for a meal was its own particular challenge. Committees were formed. In the end, we settled on these. Cam wanted to make a carpaccio, paper thin pieces of raw fish, and he thought the yellow jack was our best option due to its texture and taste. What differentiates a carpaccio from a crudo? My guess is that crudo is just Italian for raw. So a carpaccio is a crudo, in my opinion, but that's a guess. So sashimi, is that a crudo as well, or does it matter sashimi what's Sashimi is a crudo. Oh, it is? Yeah. We used to cook all the fish. I wish I'd known earlier how good all this stuff is raw. The yellow jacks, we never used to even keep them until we really? found out how good they were raw. Yeah, that's beautiful. I've never done the smashing thing. I always just the thin cutter. Anybody that's kind of shy of it being a little bit chewy or whatever, like it just melts in your mouth. It's so nice. Kimmy liked the idea of a fried fish sandwich, so mahi was the consensus choice there. It holds up really well when you fry it and is often what you find in fish tacos for that reason. She's whipping up a beer batter for the fillets while I make a red cabbage coleslaw and lemon dill aioli spread as fixings. Generally, do you like breaded or battered fish better? Oh, it depends. I don't eat a lot of battered fish, but like when you do get a really good fish and chips or, no. you know, it's just. If I had to take lot. one or the other in life, I would absolutely go breaded. Breaded, yeah. Because it, like, it, battered can sometimes get 
You ever go to a place called Long John Silver's? <laughs> no, but I, I know, I know of it. You can get carried away with the bag. Yeah, I mean, I feel like both of them are kind of a once in a while thing, but bread, it is not as heavy. Just gonna put a little more dill. You want that dilly as all get up. Oh, yeah, I, the more the better. To stay crispy. Oh, dude, that's perfect. Nice. My stuff's turning out good. Good. <laughs> Okay. Finally, Kimmy had talked up a way she cooks the yellowtail snapper that Cam and I really needed to see for ourselves. She butterflies them from the top and then pan fries them whole. Most of the islanders say if you can't see the eyes, they don't want to eat it because they don't trust it. Oh, interesting. Like they think it was dishonest. <laughs> can't look it in the eye, man. You did a really beautiful job at butterflying. Well, it took him a few tries. <laughs> we had a trial run. I like it. Oh, that was cool. Let's just put a bunch of the sauce right on this plate. And then these are edible flowers, verveins. They taste like raw mushrooms. Can you just eat them raw? Right? Yeah, and eat, chew it. Can you taste the raw mushroom? It's unmistakable. Not yet. OK. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, it's a little bit. You want to try a little purple mm -hmm. mushroom flower? Yeah. Just like nibble those off, but really try and chew little buds? The purple, yeah, the purple bits. Getting the mushroom? Mm. Keep chewing. Just keep eating it. Oh, yeah, there it yeah? is. It's it at comes like in a late, after. Delayed it's a real late. <laughs> yeah, it's a late arrival. Yeah, it Late is. onset mushroom taste. We're going to put this snapper right on top of it. Oh, that's beautiful. Looks that, good. The colors are awesome. The zest with the yellow tail. Right? It's beautiful. They're complementary colors. Damn, that's pretty. OK, are we going to dig in and mm -hmm. give us a try? OK, little yellow tail snapper. Oh, yeah. I like. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. Is it good? That's a great yeah. fish. Wow, and so fun to catch. Wow. Yeah. I like. Hmm. And that's like a staple in the Bahamas, because you can catch that any time of year, almost any depth. Mm. Yeah. That's good. Well, that really is something. Golly, it's good. Crazy little flowers in there. Try your crudo carpaccio decorated sashimi. Mmm. Good olive oil is like good maple syrup. Like, it set, makes all the difference in the world. It's so good. Like, it's sacrilegious to almost to cook with that. Like, that should right. only be eaten only like that. Only as a or... finishing thing. OK, I'm going for the sandwich. Mmm. Good? Crunchy. Good. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. People dog on it and belittle it and act like they're too good for it, but fried fish. I agree. I agree so much on There's that. a lot of good ways to make fish, but fried fish is good. Yeah. Such a great combo of flavors. Hell yes, man. Super good. I found that one of the hallmarks of great outdoorsmen is that they look around and see so much opportunity, so much exciting stuff to do that they can't even scratch the surface. They're overwhelmed by it all, regardless of where they live. By that measure, I'm here to tell you the Bahamas makes it easy to feel like a great outdoorsman. Head off toward a good location, run into a lone frigate bird along the way who's soaring 100 feet over the surface, make a pass beneath it to catch a couple mahi, and then continue on your way to chase several species of big ass groupers. Or was it to spear hogfish, or mutton snappers, or dive for conch, or maybe do some rod and reel for yellow tail snappers in 10 feet of water, or yellow eye snappers in 1,500 feet of water. You get my point. This is the land of opportunity, and we seized the opportunity. So what are we gonna catch next? 